It's uh, pretty beneficial at cocktail parties because you know a little bit about everything um, and hopefully no one asks you too many questions. We sort of have a reputation at Sanford as being the little engine that could. We don't get people here who have multiple TOC championships, multiple NFL national championships. We get kids who come here with some regional debate experience who want to do well. Debate is just like anything else, like any other sport. It, there, is a, there are different levels of the sport, and Sanford has always been at the very top level of the sport. It was a good time, a successful time, and I think it plays a, a meaningful part in the history of Sanford University, but more important, when I look over this list of about 40 or 50 people that actually debated, the successes they have achieved is great. I'll never forget, Dr. Wright was sitting next to me at the awards banquet, handing out all the trophies, and I had known him, of course. He was the president when I was at Sanford. And he said, Brad, you know, you need to come home, you know. So he offered me a job on the spot to come and coach the debate team at Sanford. And so I knew Sanford, and I knew the Sanford coaches, because even if I was at Boston College, they were a top-tier team, and we would see them all of the time. And I knew kids on the team, and I knew Skip Coulter, who was one of our favorite judges, and probably judged me at every tournament my senior year, um, because we thought we had figured him out. I was a Sanford debate coach from 1977 to 1987. It was a dream job because of the great history of debate here at Sanford. My family also has connections here, so it created a great place for me to be. So we started out that first year with only four debaters. They actually only had three left from the year team before. I had a guy named Michael Jordan, uh, who is the savior of the program. He was the one debater I inherited. He works for the Southern Company now. He uh, is still a big booster of the program. And Michael and I uh, went about trying to find people on the campus for him to go to debate tournaments to, well, with. They kind of built the foundation for debate at Sanford University. One of the debaters was Jim Etheridge, who was from Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and he was president of the SGA at Sanford. The other was a uh, Mary Lynn Bates, who was a, just a really good, smart student, a guy named Gary Walker from Cincinnati, and we recruited a kid from Birmingham named Tony Hepson. There have been some good coaches, and I think also just, and the main thing to me is some wonderful students, some very committed students, and that's, there's been a steady stream of good, solid, well-raised, committed students. It's a great legacy to live up to when you talk about people like a Brad Bishop, when you talk about people like a Skip Coulter, when you talk about people like a Mike Janis. You realize that you're literally sitting in the chair of people who have done some amazing things for this university and in debate as a whole. Jokingly, it took us about a year to convince everybody in the nation that we were not Stanford. Years ago, a, a team of Melanie Gardner and, and Eric Walker had been at Southern Cal at the tournament and they had gone all the way through the tournament and won it. And before he was presenting the trophy, they were whispering to him who had won it. And they said, Sanford University won it. And he said, Stanford? And they said, Sanford. He said, no, no, it would be Stanford. They're up the, you know, that would be the, the debate school. And they said, oh no, they said, Sanford. <laughs> That's the debate school. We won tournaments all over. We won tournaments at the University of Florida. We won a salt miner. They called it the Salt Miner Invitational in New York. We beat Notre Dame in the finals, I remember and there were 55 other schools in the tournament, and we won first place. We won the University of Arkansas tournament, we won a tournament in Kansas, and these were two-person tournaments. In 2011, we were in the Sweet 16 of the National Debate Tournament. That's something we hadn't accomplished since 1986 with Keith Herron and the Skip Coulter years where the team was in the Final Four of the National Debate Tournament as well. Our students never felt like they were the underdogs. It's competitive, and so if you're a competitive person, that's probably the prime driver. In 2013, the American Debate Association ranked us 10th in the country, so we feel like we're continuing that reputation, and hopefully in the next couple years we'll be able to make another run at the National Debate Tournament and see how we do.
You know, we've just been fortunate enough at Sanford over the decades to have students that stepped up and made the commitment. And that's what's made it a special program is, is those students and their work ethic is what made Sanford the great debate program it's been. I would try to recruit law students who had debated and done very well in college. Mm -hmm. So we started out, we got Greg Bittner from the University of Virginia who was an outstanding uh, debater. Smart people. That's really just fundamentally the difference. If you can find a really, really smart person who, ha who likes the competitive challenge and who is willing to do the work, uh, you can make a great debater. Well, I want somebody that works hard and is committed to debate. I want somebody that's willing to go the extra mile. I like to interview the mom and dad, if both of them happen to be, happen to be still with the kids. And I, I like to see what kind of family. I don't believe an apple falls too far from a tree. I don't look for people with a lot of brain power, uh, but if they can think, I can teach them to talk. I got made fun of a little bit for making this comment, but I think debaters will understand it. Someone asked me what my favorite thing about debate was, and I said, van rides. We were on the road every weekend, just about. That last day of the tournament, you want to be there a long time, but then it's six, seven o'clock at night, and you're getting ready to head back from Baylor to Birmingham, from Waco to Birmingham. And I remember a snow cake, of all things. Well, generally speaking, I would say that we ate a lot of cheeseburgers. One of the kids had slammed the door shut and, and taking the, and loading the van with all the debate materials, and it broke in the window. And so we had cardboard in the window, and we were stuck there for like seven hours just before you got on the, 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 big, the big bridge to cross the Mississippi River. Uh, no arrests uh, at tournaments, <laughs> so I got that going for me. In those van rides, we've had debates about everything from the economy to social justice to Supreme Court decisions to foreign policy. You name it, we talk about it. And that's where we get to know the kids on a level that's well beyond anything they would get in their regular academic experience. Um, we actually had uh, one of the assistant coaches, Len Neighbors, uh, like smashed the front gate because he wasn't paying attention when he drove in and wrecked a van on the front gate. But... We practiced singing our favorite song on a van ride, and I learned that Aaron Ramsey, now Aaron McCubbin, actually has a really good singing voice. One tournament that he went to, the University of Kentucky, which is best known for having a poker tournament, and Len had decided he was going to become a poker genius after he'd seen a movie. We were also famous for, we, we had high ambitions and a mediocre budget at the time. I'd hate to subject too many people to my singing voice. When I sing in church, people become atheists. So. That's not my cup of tea, but I really enjoyed that experience. So we would stay in some motels that became kind of a joking matter for my debaters, that we've stayed in some pretty scary places. Only he had not really trained to be a poker genius. He lost all of the money for meals and gas at the University of Kentucky and has to ask the debaters for contributions so that they could get enough gas to get home. Um, the debaters, you know, came home and they complained. But the next year, when we hired a new coach, Ben Coulter, who was the most like stable, normal person ever, they all complained that he wasn't interesting enough relative to Len. Yeah, you know, I've had a good career. I mean, I've been in, been a judge for a long time. I've been a law professor for a long time. But looking back on those days, those eight or ten years that I coached debate coach with coach debate at Sanford. I would say that those were the happiest years of my life, and it basically had to just be with these people who worked very hard. I have seen students invest so hard in the program. I've seen students, I, I just remember a guy named John McWhorter. My run was about as good a run as a person could have, I think. We practiced debate after everybody else went home every, during the week. Uh, just made friendships that have lasted forever. Well, I hope to be able to turn it over to someone who had similar aspirations to I had when I took over the program. Well, I consider debate part of the whole university family. It's not about us. It's not about what happens in a little room somewhere on campus. We're part of the whole family, and the university has invested in us, but we've tried to invest right back in the university and, and put kids through an experience that would strengthen them for their life. <laughs>